Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for free premium sports picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, as many of you know, I have a law degree. As some others might know, I have done just a little bit of legal work in the boxing field. Let's talk about in a sport where everyone seems to be suing everyone else. Let's talk about one lawsuit in particular. Main events law lawsuit against Al Heyman, Showtime, and others arising from the failed talks at a Kovalev versus Adonis Stevenson fight, right? It would have been a unification match in the light heavyweight division. Now, let me just say, as far as I know, I have never worked with or had a contract with anyone involved in this lawsuit, right? So I don't want anyone here to think that I have an agenda other than to figure out what's going on and to try to share that information with you. Looking online, I don't really see enough information on this lawsuit, right? Well, let's set the record straight. The complaint, and I'm just going to go by the complaint. The complaint alleges that an email agreement was reached between main events and representatives for Donna Stevenson for a fight between Kovalev and Stevenson. Right? There are actual emails quoted in the complaint where one side says, hey, we'll agree to this. The other side says, great. Then they reach the oral agreement. Keep in mind, while they're written emails, no one signed them, right? The fighters haven't signed them. What you have is really some kind of oral understanding between two camps. Now from that, main events, after Stevenson signed with Al Heyman and decided to proceed in a different direction, main events sued Stevenson's representative Yvonne Michael for fraud sued Al Heyman for interference with contract right sued Showtime sued everyone it seems involved with Stevenson's change of heart now here's what you need to know right understand that lawsuits are filed for a lot of reasons Sometimes, and only sometimes, they're filed because you think you have a winnable case in court. In the world of sports and entertainment, sometimes they're filed to strengthen your negotiating position as you try to get a fight down the road. No doubt, Kovalev's people want to fight Adonis Stevenson. Right? It would be a blockbuster fight. Stevenson is a cash cow in Canada. No question about it. So, of course, if you file a lawsuit, it kind of moves you to the front of the line. It also gets the fans all hot and bothered, so they start demanding the fight. You can imagine if Stevenson gives a press conference, someone is going to ask him about this lawsuit. Someone is going to ask him about Sergei Kovalev. Right? But understand, lawsuits filed for PR purposes might be meritorious, might not be meritorious from a legal perspective. Now, let me just say this. There are a lot of facts that don't jump out from the complaint. The jurisdiction, right, the complaints filed in the state of New York in federal court under diversity jurisdiction. But understand, where the fight was to be held and things like that, 
the choice of law would actually decide whether this case is viable. But I'm going to float some legal concepts out here that I want you to consider and I want to talk about another case involving fighters you know. Current world heavyweight champion Vladimir Klitschko. Right? Former champion Shannon Briggs. Well known big hitter behind the scenes in boxing Shelly Finkel. Right? Understand years ago there was a lawsuit Gotham Boxing versus Shelly Finkel Shelly Finkel's management group or advisory group and Vladimir Klitschko and that case was very much like this case in that case the contention was there was an oral agreement reached for Vladimir Klitschko to fight Shannon Briggs of course when they tried to memorialize that agreement in writing to submit to the New York State Athletic Commission for their blessing talks fell apart right so of course Shannon Briggs's people sued for breach of contract for breach of the covenant of good faith and fair dealing and other claims understand boxing is highly regulated that suit went nowhere Shelley Finkel was able to file a motion to dismiss because a contract is not a contract in boxing unless it is blessed, unless it is approved by the local boxing commission, right? For fights that are to take place in New York State, the New York State Athletic Commission has the absolute right to look at the written agreement between the parties and keep in mind that agreement would have to be signed and then to approve or not to approve the deal. In other words, unlike the rest of the world, where you reach some kind of oral agreement with a buddy and you have a cause of action for breach of oral contract if that agreement is breached. In the world of boxing, at least in major jurisdictions like New York State, that oral agreement's not enforceable causes of action that are derived from the presumption of an oral agreement such as breach of the covenant of good faith and fair dealing don't exist without an enforceable agreement right understand in the main events versus Heyman case everyone would agree that number one there's no written contract signed by the fighters number two there's been no commission approval of any such written agreement now I'm just here to tell you that that's a huge hurdle for the plaintiff to try to overcome I don't think they do I'm sure everyone in the room knows that the camps reached an oral understanding that Kovalev would fight Adonis Stevenson. That's not enough in boxing. Right? At least in the United States, these states have empowered state athletic commissions slash boxing commissions. These commissions propound regulatory rules. Right? They issue rules with requirements. Fighters can't fight without signed contracts approved by the commission. You can't sue someone and prevail in court for breach of oral contract when the local regulations say that only written contracts are enforceable. In the Shelley Finkel case, all Finkel and company had to show was that there was no written contract approved by the State Athletic Commission. Right? Let's float a few other 
concepts out there. Understand, for those of you who study defamation law, certain statements are immune from liability. In other words, if I'm your advisor, right, and you have a contract or an oral understanding, let me tell you, here in California, and understand, the law does vary from state to state, but here in California, we have a statute. It's California Civil Code Section 47. Understand, many of the private comments that an advisor tells his principal or her principal can't be the basis for a cause of action by a third party. Right? So, hypothetically speaking, if a boxing manager or an advisor, let's say a Shelley Finkel or an Al Heyman, tells a fighter with whom he has a contractual relationship. I don't think you should fight that opponent. In my opinion, I don't believe they have an enforceable contract under the laws of this jurisdiction. The other party then can't use those statements as the grounds for tort claims such as intentional interference with contractual relations or even intentional interference with prospective economic advantage right because what the law wants is they want people to be able to get advice from advisors they want those advisors to be able to give advice without fear of some third party stepping in and saying, hey, this advice wasn't favorable to me. So I'm going to sue the advisor. Now that's how it looks to me the main events lawsuit claims are geared with regard to Al Heyman. Right? Al Heyman gave advice to Adonis Stevenson and somehow Main Events wants to sue him for that advice. Let me point out another problem. If you're going to sue a guy for intentional interference with existing contractual relations, you're going to have to prove existing contractual relations. You're going to have to show an enforceable contract. If you can't show an enforceable contract, that tort claim fails right there. If you can show an enforceable contract, then you have to make the next argument as to whether or not the statements made by an advisor to the fighter with whom that advisor has a contractual relationship, why those private statements could be the basis for a lawsuit by you. Right? So, to sum up, look, I'd like to see a Kovalev Stevenson fight. I think that'd be a great fight. By the way, I'd be taking Kovalev in that fight. But let's get real here. Right? Suing Stevenson for not proceeding to sign a written agreement and then submit it to the local boxing commission is an overreach, in my opinion by main events. Right? What I want you to do is to download the main events versus Al Heyman complaint. You can literally just Google it and download it. It's on an excellent website, doghouseboxing.com. Then what I also want you to do is to look a little bit deeper. Go back a few years and find the Gotham Boxing versus Shelley Finkel and Vladimir Klitschko lawsuit and see how the court handled that action. Right? The problem is simply the court might handle this action the same way. I get the feeling that the main events complaint 
was filed in part for PR purposes and not legal purposes, right? If I get my hands on some of these other, <laughs> these other big lawsuits in boxing, right, such as Golden Boy suing Richard Schaefer for $50 million. <laughs> By the way, Schaefer remains a shareholder of Golden Boy, so I'm curious to see how that lawsuit is couched, right? And some of these other lawsuits, as you know, everyone seems to be suing everyone else in boxing. Then I'll try to pass along that information. But just know, Main Events' lawsuit against Al Heyman and Showtime and others has some holes in it. Let me hear from you, and I know a lot of law students and lawyers follow me here online. Don't hesitate to leave your comments, whether you agree with me or disagree with me. Let's make this a public forum, right? Fight fans are too often on the sidelines hearing about everyone suing each other, and we're not able to figure out what's going on. Then, of course, promoters put their spin on it, right? Everyone's camp has a vested interest in marketing themselves and marketing their legal position to the public without really a real understanding that some actions aren't actionable and of course a contract has to jump through certain hoops to be approved by the relevant state athletic commission so let me hear from you leave your comments for me here online visit us at gamblersadvisory.com and for my legal page richard dwyer dot com. Thanks for stopping by.